Nick here with tinywoodstove.com and we're gonna be doing a short video on how to build a fire and use your air controls on your dwarf small wood stove. Let's get started. So what do you need to start a fire? Well, you need some matches and some fire starters. And then I like to have uh, my wood all in order before I even strike a match. So I start off with a log cabin and just some very dry, small kind of kindling pieces. And then, uh, bit bigger pieces that once that's going hot, I'll put this on and then some bigger fuel pieces and then later on uh, even bigger pieces, which could be just larger chunks or uh, compressed, compressed logs. Okay, so let's build our fire. So for st fire starters, I really like these uh, break and burn. And you can just break a little square off. So your dwarf small stove has a primary air control, secondary air control, and then your air wash. The easiest thing to do is just to leave all of these wide open. Um, then I have my, my fire starter in there and I'm just gonna build a little log cabin with my small kindling pieces. There's lots of different ways to do this. You can do a TP. I don't, with this break and burn though, I don't need any newspaper or anything like that. This will burn for probably uh, 10 to 15 minutes. So I just have my, my TP there and then shut the door and just let that get nice and hot. When you're making your fire, you want to start small and before adding bigger fuel, you want that to get nice and hot. If you have different vents inside your house, a uh, composting toilet vent, like a hood range vent, um, and your house is relatively tight, you'll probably want to shut those off when starting. Um, it can take a little bit to get a flue system to draft properly, um, building up, up heat. And so like with our composting toilet, if the fan is on high and it's really cold out, sometimes we can get, um, smoke coming back into the house because that fan is pulling air out and there's not enough uh, forces to pull it up the flue and it just it just comes out and it makes a mess. So we turn that to low or off. You can also just crack the door real quick and then um, have everything wide open, get it get it fired up. Once it's going, it's not it's not an issue. You can turn it back on and use that, no problem. So our log cabin is going nice and hot and we're ready to add on a little bit bigger of fuel. So we're going to, to crack the door. You don't want to just fling the door open. Um, that, can, that can mess with the draft. So I like to crack it. It allows a lot more air in, just kind of let that going and then you can slowly open the door. And then I'm going to add on I just like to continue the log cabin and then let that get nice and hot and all catch. So there's several tools that you can use in, in kind of measuring the efficiency of the burn. One is you can go out and look at your chimney. Um, if there's lots of smoke coming out, uh, it's not burning super efficient. Right now we just put our second wave of logs on and they haven't all ignited yet and charred. So if you go outside and look, there's gonna be some smoke coming out and it'll continue to do that until all of these have caught. Now I know that these logs are dry, so once they do catch, you won't see any smoke coming out of the flue. It'll just be uh, heat waves. Another way that you can kind of measure that is with your flue thermometer. And you wanna keep in the best operation range where it's not too hot, where you're sending all your, your heat out the flue and wasting fuel, but also not too cool where the flue gases aren't, aren't getting hot enough and you're gonna get creosote and smoke and all of that building up. So until all of these get charred, we'll have a little bit of smoke coming out of the flue. So a tool that is super handy to have in managing your fire is a poker tool. Th these are our hand forged poker tools that we do in our shop. 
and um, real simple, uh, but super handy for arranging things in the fire, getting those butt ends away from the glass so you don't get a bunch of junk on the glass. And uh, you can use it to kind of like uh, pop coals apart and, and get it nice and hot. So super handy tool. When your fire is just starting up, it's best to use primary air. And you just think about when you're blowing on a fire, you blow on those coals and they ignite. That's what the primary air is doing. There's a little valve or a little port on the bottom. And that's what th this is connected to. And that's air is blowing on the bottom of those coals and, and getting everything going. The secondary air is coming about halfway through the firebox. If you look in the back there, you'll see the little secondary air holes. And that's for when you have a good hot uh, coal bed and you have kind of the chain reaction is happening, everything is charred. You can shut down the, the primary and then the secondary air is introduced as those gases are coming up, oxygen's introduced, and you have kind of a secondary combustion, which is more of a gasification burn. And it's slower, it's hotter, and it's a lot more efficient. If you keep your primary air open uh, consistently, you're gonna be burning through a lot more wood. So it's nice just to shut that down. So I have a good hot fire. Um, some of the initial stuff that I put in there is just about burnt out. My log cabin's about to knock over, so I'm gonna help it out. I'm gonna open up, crack the door. Take my tool in there. Get that shifted. And then maybe add another, another piece of fuel. So once new fuel is added on and it's charred black, um, this is the point in the, in the burn process where I can shut down that primary air. So once this new piece that I've added on there is charred, I'll go ahead and shut down that primary and then just do the secondary for a, a more, efficient, more efficient burn. Okay, we've been burning our fire for a while. We've been doing it just with the secondary air. Uh, our thermometer looks good. It's still at towards the upper end, the best operation. The, the flu is not putting out any smoke. It's just uh, clear kind of heat waves coming out and we're about ready to restoke it. You wanna restoke it when you have a good hot coal base and you're gonna adjust the air when you do that. So getting ready to restoke it, I'm gonna open up my primary. I'm gonna open the door and crack it. And then I like to just kind of chop up, chop up my coals and then I'm gonna I'm gonna add a bunch of wood there. And I'm gonna keep this primary open until, again, all of this is, is charred. And I can shut that primary, just do the secondary. And then if I wanna get a little bit longer burn time, I can dampen this down and dampen this down too. Again, you're gonna to wanna to look at your flu thermometer and make sure it stays kind of in that best operation and then adjust your air controls so that it's not getting too cold where you're gonna get um, the flue gas is cooling down and then changing from gas to solid form and getting that creosote in the flue. So after I stoke, I like to hit the riddling grate and that just shifts the, the, the floor of the firebox and it allows ash and coals and stuff to fall out of the way so that air can blow up through that. So occasionally you can just hit that to get better airflow through the firebox. So that's how to make a fire in your dwarf smallwood stove and how to use the air controls. If uh, you would like to check out any of these accessories that we use, the firewood bag, the fire starters, or the poker tool, check out our website, tinywoodstove.com under accessories. And also check out our learn tab for more tips, tricks, and uh, things with maintaining and using your smallwood stove. Thanks for watching.